Hi, I'm Steve Hendricks. Today I want to tell you what I learned about fasting for high blood pressure while researching my book on fasting, The Oldest Cure in the World. In the United States, nearly half of all adults, 47%, either have high blood pressure, which is defined as greater than 130 over 80, or would have high blood pressure if not for their medication keeping it down. But even among people taking medication for hypertension, three out of four still have it. And every year, half a million Americans are killed by hypertension either outright or as a contributing cause of death. It kills by making the heart work harder and by putting too much stress on the walls of arteries, which makes them inflexible. The result is deadly heart attacks and heart failure, aneurysms, strokes, plus a host of less immediately fatal but still terrible conditions like dementia, kidney disease, impotence, and blindness. Groups like the American Heart Association and National Kidney Foundation say high blood pressure cannot be cured, but it can be managed. But is it true it can't be cured? Throughout the 20th century, scientists occasionally noticed that when they took away someone's food, their blood pressure began to drop. And as the days passed, the pressure kept dropping until it eventually reached a normal level and flattened out. But it wasn't until the 1990s that a fasting doctor named Alan Goldhammer became the first person to study the matter in a large group of fasters. Goldhammer runs America's biggest fasting clinic, the True North Health Center in Northern California, and for his study, he enlisted the help of T. Colin Campbell, a renowned professor of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University. Together, they looked at 174 of Goldhammer's patients who came to True North with high blood pressure and fasted for an average of a week and a half on nothing but water. Goldhammer and Campbell found that 154 of them, nearly 9 out of 10, normalized their blood pressure. Even those who didn't get down to normal blood pressure still enjoyed substantial drops, and all of the patients who had been on drugs for hypertension before their fasts were able to discontinue those pills. The patients who did the best were the ones with the worst blood pressure before fasting. On average, patients with severe hypertension, stage 3, enjoyed a staggering drop of 60 points in systolic pressure, the top number in a blood pressure reading. That's 60 as in 6 zero. Among all the patients, the average drop in systolic over diastolic pressure was 37 over 13. Never before had any therapy reported in a scientific journal, not drugs, not exercise, not any other lifestyle change, produced a drop that big. Goldhammer and Campbell submitted their groundbreaking findings to one journal after another and were rejected by 30 of them. Apparently, the idea that fasting could heal, let alone heal spectacularly, was beyond the comprehension of most science editors. Finally, though, in 2001, an obscure but not disreputable journal published their findings, which to this day remain the largest drop in blood pressure ever reported from any therapy in a peer-reviewed journal. The following year, Goldhammer and Campbell published another study focusing on how fasting affected people who were only mildly hypertensive. 82% of the patients in that study achieved a healthy blood pressure of 120 over 80 or lower, with an average fast of just two weeks, and their average drop was 20 over 7. This was all great news. But what about after the fast? One problem that researchers had noticed over the last century was as soon as a faster started eating again, her blood pressure shot back up. This led researchers to think of fasting, to the extent that they thought about it at all, as some kind of parlor trick that could work temporarily but couldn't bring about a real cure. But Alan Goldhammer was working in a long line of fasting doctors, many of whom had said if a disease went away when you took the food away, wasn't it possible that something in the food was causing the disease? And if so, was it any surprise the disease came back when you refed fasters on the same food that had caused the disease? Fasting doctors like Herbert Shelton in the United States, Otto Buchinger in Germany, and Alec Burton in Australia had found that diets heavily based in plants usually kept the diseases that disappeared during fasting from returning on refeeding. From their clinical observations, and from more recent scientific evidence as well, Alan Goldhammer concluded that the healthiest diet was probably a vegan diet of minimally processed plants free of added salt, oil, and sugar what he calls an SOS-free diet of whole plants. Not coincidentally, his co-author, T. Colin Campbell, found the same thing in his pioneering research, which he detailed in his best-selling book, The China Study. 
So Goldhammer refed the, the fasters at his clinic on an SOS-free, whole plant diet and urged them to keep eating it when they went home. Among 42 volunteers in Goldhammer and Campbell's first study, who took part in a follow-up six months after their fasts, the average blood pressure rose hardly a jot, and the people who did best seemed to be the ones who stuck closest to Goldhammer's diet. To all appearances, fasting followed by a diet of whole plants had cured them of their high blood pressure. This was pretty astonishing, but Goldhammer and Campbell's studies weren't randomized controlled trials, and without a control group, it was impossible to say for sure that fasting was behind their cure. Even so, the two studies were just the kind of solid preliminary research that should have led to better-funded, more rigorous studies. At least, they should have if medical research were funded based on what's best for the patient rather than what's best for drug companies. The problem is that the drug and medical device companies that control most of the funding for clinical trials can't make huge profits off of fasting. And the low-cost fasting clinics like True North, where the treatment consists of little more than monitoring people, don't make the kind of profits that would allow them to conduct big, randomized, controlled trials. Fasting clinics like True North also have little money to advertise the discoveries they do make, so in the two decades since Goldhammer and Campbell reported their probable cure for high blood pressure, it remains all but unknown. You might think that advocacy groups like the National Kidney Foundation and the American Heart Association would be all over this low-cost remedy demanding more research, but they haven't been. Which makes you wonder, when the Heart Association says high blood pressure cannot be cured but it can be managed, is it just coincidence that the Heart Association takes millions of dollars 44 million in a recent year, from the drug and medical companies that profit from managing hypertension? More happily, after three decades in practice, Alan Goldhammer finally amassed the client base, the expertise, and the fundraising prowess to start his own research foundation. In the last several years, his team at True North has undertaken multiple fasting studies, including one that looked at blood pressure with the help of researchers from the Mayo Clinic. The work has only just begun, but a small study published in 2022 reaffirmed what Goldhammer and Campbell had shown 20 years before. In a group of volunteers who fasted for a median of 17 days, the average systolic blood pressure dropped from 130 to 119, and it continued to fall slightly to 117 as the volunteers refed on an SOS-free whole plant diet. We still await the randomized controlled trials that would settle the question once and for all, but thanks to Goldhammer and a few others like him, that day may not be far away. But if you or someone you care about has high blood pressure, you don't need to wait for more research to see if fasting can help. Fasting under medical supervision has been proven safe in multiple trials, and virtually everyone with high blood pressure who fasts enjoys a substantial drop. Let me emphasize, however, under medical supervision. The fasting doctors who I interviewed have differing opinions about whether healthy people can fast for a short time without medical supervision. Some say yes, some say no, but all of the doctors I talked to agreed that if you aren't healthy, if you have a disorder, even something as supposedly minor as mild high blood pressure, or if you're taking medications of any kind, or if you even suspect you might have a health problem, then you shouldn't fast for longer than 18 hours on your own. On my website, stevehendricks.org, you can find a short list of clinics with doctors experienced in supervising fasts. And if you're interested in learning about healthy dietary change, the sort of SOS-free, whole plant diet that Goldhammer uses at True North, a diet you can start any time, and which has been shown to lower high blood pressure even without a fast, I recommend the work of Dr. Michael Greger, Dr. Dean Ornish, Dr. Neil Bernard, nutritionist Brenda Davis, and nutritionist Simon Hill. Finally, I want to emphasize that prolonged fasting isn't a cure-all. It doesn't work for every condition or every person, but it can help an awful lot of people with a wide variety of problems, and maybe you or someone you know will be one of them.